Tubiest of the Tubiest. The best YouTube subscribers on the planet. That's you. And I'm 50 plus. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about oversized loads. Before we get to that, I want to say first, uh, appreciate you guys hanging in. I know there's gaps in when I upload uh, material and videos for you guys. And one of those reasons is... I really don't like to waste your time. I don't want to put uh, trivial information out there because it it, it, it it serves no purpose and you could be doing other things and listen to me ramble on about ridiculous things, you know, or trivial items. I try to give you uh, useful information if you ever click on this channel, okay? And that being said, um, if you all are watching this video and you believe that my content is worthy of your time, please subscribe click on the notification bell and also give a thumbs up to these videos. You hear this a lot when you're uh, watching uh, YouTube videos and the deal is especially on, a, on a, site, a, uh, a channel like mine where I don't upload every single day, um, the subscribing and the thumbs up is very crucial uh, because it still keeps you guys uh, on YouTube's radar and I don't have to just keep pumping out useless information to you guys just so that I can keep a high uh, YouTube algorithm you follow me so there's a method to the madness but uh, I hope that whenever you do click on that uh, that notification bell and, and and you subscribe to the channel and you give the thumbs up uh, on each video that you watch that uh, I'm giving you some worthy content, okay? So, <clears throat> please do that. And if you are considering coming to Melton, down below I'm gonna have a link. And uh, if you click that link, it's gonna take you to a, a, uh, a little short deal that's gonna ask you for some contact information. That's it, it's gonna ask you for your, uh, you know, basically how to get in contact with your name, phone number, and uh, email contact, and you know, that's it. You don't have to fill out some huge long, uh, application before someone contacts you here at Melton, okay? Otherwise, uh, uh, you can use, uh, if you're just filling out a, uh, from another site, just put S-M-A-T-E as driver code. Smate S-M-A-T-E for the driver code in there, and that does help me and it helps this channel to continue to pump out this information. So I really do appreciate it. Now, oversized loads. When, when you get here, you're not going to do a, a whole hell of a lot of them, okay? But when I get questions about oversized loads, um, it's it's rare that I get uh, questions about how to rig the truck, basically where to put the signs uh, and flashing lights and stuff like that. I rarely get questions about that. Um, what I get questions about is the permits and we're going to go over a permit today and i'm going to tell you guys um i'm going to let you see a permit this is an actual permit um and uh um, what i've done is crop them and then screenshot because it's got information on there that i don't need to share with the public <laughs> you know what i'm trying to do is get you gist of information right okay so um <clears throat> Before we get going on that, there's a couple of things I want you to, 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 to get you to get right here, okay? A permit load uh, can be um, either, either a hazmat load, it could be um, um, an oversized load, it could be an overweight load, and those two, a lot of people think it's the same thing, but but it's not uh, oversized. Overweight is considered an oversized load, but it's overweight, not overdimensional, okay? So an overdimensional load means you're outside the width of the trailer or, or, or outside the length of the trailer. You got too much overhang front and rear or too much overhang on the either side, uh, outside the rug rails, okay? That makes you a, uh, a over dimensional load which is an oversized load okay um, you can be inside the rub rails you can be 
less than 14 high or whatever but your your weight is puts you over uh, 80,000 gross then that is still an oversized load it's you're just overweight okay so you, those are all permit loads okay and to in, in a permit load you must follow the rules and the confinement of those pages that's it so when they when they give you a permit that permit basically wipes out any other information that you may have in travel because you are now bound to the four corners of that permit so you need to read it in its entirety the deal is reading those permits uh can oftentimes be very confusing and I understand that um, some of the wording it's almost like reading a law book okay and that's what we're going to kind of read over some of this stuff and and I'm going to skip through some things um, to just to hit the final point so you guys aren't stuck with me for two hours while I'm trying to you know convey some information to you I'm, what I'm going to give you is the gist of it I just don't want it to be a surprise to you whenever you get an oversized load Another thing um, about oversized loads, um, when you get that, uh, get the uh, message, and the message is going to tell you that you're going to be getting the permit load. There's a couple of ways you're going to get those permits, okay? And you need to try to figure that out prior to arriving at the shipper, okay? Um, and contact the DM. Say, hey, look, you know, what's the deal with these permits? Because you can't pick the per pick that load up and travel with that load without the permits. So if you go to the shipper to pick the load up, you can't then leave the shipper and go down the road to a truck stop uh, and and print out the permits because you cannot r roll on the get outside that shipper's property and then onto public highways without that permit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is acquire the permit information prior to arriving at the shipper. So call your, your DM if the information isn't there, and they may have you stop at a truck stop or something to print these things out. I have a printer in my truck, and then I ju they just send it to me, and then I print those things out right there on the truck. And um, and then I don't I don't have to be worried about that. You, you may be 30 miles from a a uh, spot where you can get these things printed. Sometimes those permits are printed at the shipper, especially if it's a uh, if it's a hazmat load. Um, it's on you for the route for hazmat. That's on a driver. You get the route for the hazmat yourself. Okay, you just have to take the roads that are not uh, restricted by hazmat. Um, you just put your your signage out and um, and then just follow hazmat rules but the shipper will give you uh your msds uh, sheet along with the bill lading and uh and then they may also have signage for you okay so that's hazmat stuff may be a different video but it's it, you're gonna it's almost similar to just make sure that you have all the paperwork before you you leave off but with the oversized load you have to have that, that paperwork before you get to the shipper if the case is that the shipper is not providing you with your printed permits okay all right the next thing is i don't make the rules but i really wish that uh at least in your first 90 days at least in your first 90 days as a solo driver you shouldn't be getting uh oversized loads and hazmat loads because uh you know you're still familiarizing yourself with the truck and uh and we often uh go out of route and stuff like that and, and you know and you don't you just not experienced enough that you can slow things down enough to be able to work with these permits okay we're going to get to a spot in a permits where it's telling you literally in writing to you know go this distance and turn left go this distance and turn right and it doesn't say that it says, it says go north and south and east and west stuff like that but you're going to have to be able to decipher that information and you driving a truck 
that you're still getting used to and then there's information here so it's not real good what i do i have a garmin okay and what what i do is manually put that route in the uh, garmin according to the permit that way i can just follow what the garmin is telling me and i have to keep glancing at the paperwork make sure that i'm going the right way okay that is an option so i'm going to show you now how to read one of these permits what they look like and you're going to have a lot of questions when it's over because um you know some of you have done this before but the all permits aren't printed the same imagine that right i mean if you get a permit from different states they print them different they look different but uh this is a, a texas permit and it's Texas going into uh, Oklahoma. And I'll start talking to you again about things that are important along the way. So here we go. All right, guys. Here we go. Now, there's a portion above this. This is basically a screenshot, okay? So there's a section above this that has all the particulars of, uh, of who acquired the permit the vehicle that's being permitted the trailer um the company the shipper the receiver all that information is at the top it's not on this because you don't need that okay that's between the company who it's not it's not relevant here let's just put it that way okay but this is the body of it and of course you, you see where it says uh starts with three that means one and two is at the top and that's the the personal information but you can pause this and, and kind of read over this thing if you want to. It's just uh, the, uh, the start of this, uh, the pertinent information for this particular permit. So let's just go straight to um, number nine, okay? And number nine, uh, this, per this may not be used on containers, Okay, and uh, containers and intermodals. Now, uh, those are uh, uh, trailers pulling. Uh, there's a, they're actually chassis pulling trailers or trailers that are carrying uh, a uh, a container. It's uh, stuff that comes off the ship. You know those big iron looking deals. Uh, and so if you're driving from Milton and you're not pulling one of those anyway, so that really doesn't matter. But the reason I say start at nine is because you're going to see, you're going to see information similar to that. It says this permit may not be used on containers. Like eight says permit valid only in command. This is okay. So it's going to give you restrictions and that's what i'm trying to get you guys to to get in the habit of looking at as we go along you're going to start seeing wording like that that says what you may and may not do okay all right so 10 is where it starts getting uh very concerning to the driver uh, of a of the legal load and the legal load meaning as you're, you're you're carrying a load that is that fits within the parameters of this permit okay so we're not we're not concerned about being le illegal from from the start we're talking about you being completely legal you're going to operate within the confinements of this permit okay so it says number 10 says uh daylight movement only unless otherwise specified under the root conditions and general con uh, conditions now we're going to get to that but it's important that you understand um that is crucial that you know that that this permit is telling you that you can only move when daylight it says daylight moving only unless see this is why i wanted you to take a look at eight and nine where uh, these permits have uh, their boundaries. They're basically telling you what you can and cannot do. And that's going to happen throughout this whole deal. But you have to be able to understand when uh, one sentence here, daylight moving only, 
doesn't end there. What it's telling you is that it's daylight moving only unless it tells you later on that you can. <laughs> okay, so it can get confusing if you're not really paying attention to what you're reading. Number 11, uh, it says overweight only may travel at night with no escort. So what does that mean? Read it. And it means exactly what it says. Overweight only. So remember we, earlier we talked about overdimensional and overweight. They're all permit loads. They are different though, okay? So overweight may travel at night with no escorts. And it means exactly that. So if you're overdimensional, you cannot travel at night. Okay? These things are extremely important. Okay? And if you do, you got to have escorts. And you're not going to have escorts with, with this, with, with Melton for sure. Okay? I've never seen a, a, a escorted load. I don't say that it, it doesn't happen, okay? I may retract that. I, I don't mean that it's never going to happen because I don't know. I just never, has, I never heard of it. And, and, uh, and that just because I ain't never heard of it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. But, um, uh, the bottom line is um, the conditions of this particular permit is written right here. And I'm just trying to get you some uh, insight to how this thing can be a little tricky. Okay. Uh, load number 12 loads, not exceeding 10 feet wide, 14 high, uh, 100 feet in length with legal front and rear overhang. May travel at night on interstate highway system with no escort required. So that you're going to see why that particular um, statement makes a difference when we get uh, to the next pages when we start getting routes. And you're going to see that these routes uh, may or not be uh, may or may not be interstate highway systems. And if it's not a interstate we might have a problem okay uh we may have a problem uh, uh traveling at night okay so um the rest of those i want you to go ahead and just read on your own okay just kind of brief yourself through it now what i just talked to you guys about was basic the basic parameters of of, of movement in its general factors, okay? And it, that makes a difference because later on it's gonna be, it's gonna then tell you what the specific inspect uh, uh, guidelines will be. And, and it's got to then uh, be married to these that we just went over, okay? Let's just go to the next page. All right. As you can see, Bass 22 starts your route. And so it's telling us where we started, okay? And then seven miles, and then you're gonna make a move. It says left turn on, you see that? Uh, Glamour Road, see that? And then 16 miles, almost 17 miles later, you're gonna make another one. And then 21 miles later, you make another move. All of these, okay, are how I input the information into the Garmin that, that I was talking about earlier. So I don't have to keep looking at this. I input it and then look at the route and make sure that it, it does match what I put in and then press go. And then it basically puts me on the legal routes. And you don't have to be concerned that uh, you're turning the right and wrong way every time you make a turn, okay? <clears throat> But as you can see, FM and SL and US, uh, a US highway is not a, 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 uh, the uh, interstate. So basically, all of these roads that this thing is putting us on, on this page is not interstate. Now, because they're not interstate, do you remember the rule? That, it, that the general rule stated on the previous page. If not, just go back to it. Okay. Um, I think it was number 12. Yep. See number 12. All right. So 
now we're starting to put it together. All that stuff that was up front, those do's and don'ts are going to start coming into play right now when it's telling you, when you're looking at this route and you don't see uh, interstate. So if you don't see interstate, then you're going to have to make a decision where you're supposed to be riding or not based off of that, what you saw on 12. And there's the rest of it. I don't see any um, interstate uh here this looks like uh all uh, u.s highways and there's going to be um there's a turnpike let me see well i don't think so either so <clears throat> basically this this route doesn't have any interstate to it if it doesn't have interstate then you you're, you're not going to uh number 12 is going to apply to you okay and so now hopefully you can understand why reading those wording exactly lets you know what what you're supposed to do. You got to work within the parameters of what's instructed in the first part of this uh, uh, this permit. It's not hard. You just have to know that you don't need to be driving at night if the permit just told you that uh, you can't do it. Okay. Permit restrictions. Now, <clears throat> this is going to kind of tell you a little bit more in in regular language what you can and can't do. Okay, and it's it's very specific. Okay, um, um, when using the Oklahoma Turnpike, let's just see that one right in the middle. It says when using the Oklahoma Turnpike, uh, while those may not travel on uh, Fridays between two and twelve. Okay, so this is this is pretty basic, you know. Just don't do it. Whatever the permit says, you need to work your uh, your routes around that and your uh, pre your plan around what you see here. Okay, guys. Now, bottom part of this has uh, standard restrictions, and if you look at the almost to the very bottom, it says no over oh, no oversized movement is allowed in the interstate highway system between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. or between 3 and 6 p.m. in Tulsa. You see, so it's kind of giving you some very, very specific information. And it's going to vary from state to state. Remember, with this permit started in Texas. It's going to, it's going to terminate in uh, Oklahoma. But very basic information and the reason why guys get in trouble with these is not because they uh made a mistake it's because they didn't put forth the effort they did not read the permit and follow these uh permits to the letter and if you do not you're going to be in trouble okay because the laws in each state is different and the dps in those states they know what the law they know what you were where an oversized load is it is not supposed to be uh, traveling and this is not hard it basically tells you exactly what's going on and in this video i just wanted you to get a basic look at a permit we're not we're not uh, breaking it down into its itty bitties um and and you're gonna do that if you get an oversized load with, with a with a with a mentor He'll break it down a little bit better because you're going to end up doing it. You're going to follow it, okay? Here, um, for obvious reasons, if they're not obvious, I'll tell you. This is, you know, this the company's permit. I'm not going to put all the information out there that would uh, get, you know, get trouble started. So there are some things missing, but what is not missing is the is the is the essence of what a a uh, oversized permit looks like okay and this is not hard guys you can do this but the reason that i'm decided to make this video is because um i've seen it happen um very very recently and it actually happened to one of my uh one of my students who, who i really don't think he should have had that load to be quite honest with you because i don't believe he had enough experience uh as a solo driver to uh take an oversized load uh, and he's still getting familiar with the truck and he ended up making a wrong turn and now you didn't turn down a road that uh, uh, oversized load should not be on and uh, and he got ticket it's not cool um, 
I think he just he was put in a, in a piss poor situation. However, um, reading these things, uh, as you can see, it does have the information that you need. As long as you follow the route, you should be okay. So, uh, this is going to be the last uh, clip right here that you guys are going to see. And, and, and the reason I showed it all is because I just want you to see where uh, the full picture of what was at the bottom of the last one. The standard restrictions. It just basically tells you what you can't do. Restrictions means what you cannot do. It doesn't say what you allow. It doesn't say standard allowed access. It says standard restrictions. So when you read that, it tells you what you cannot do. Follow it. If it tells you you can't do it, don't do it. And these things are not hard. It's plain English right there. But and, and outside of that, outside of that, if you have a question about um, what is the right thing to do when you get a permit, um, you know, this thing says uh, that you cannot move between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. So does that mean between 5 and 6 or between 5 and 6.59 that you need to stay idle or and then wait and move after 9? What is it actually saying? Um, if you don't, if you think that there's a, that you may not understand exactly what they're uh, uh, telling you here, then you need to pick up a phone and call safety. Ask them that question. Say, this, can you can you clarify what, 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 what I'm thinking here? Am I right or wrong or what's going on? Um, and, and then they'll let you know, but don't, don't guess, guess wrong, then end up in, in trouble. Okay. Um, going down the wrong roads with oversized loads, it, it can be extremely expensive, extremely expensive. Do not believe that the company is going to pay for your, uh, ticket. They're not. They're going to say, okay, you know, hey, you, this is oversized, man. You done drove down this road uh, 20 miles, and, you know, this is $2,500 fine. How do you want to pay that? You want to write a check to us, or uh, we got to pay it, so you got to pay us back. Uh, you know, you want us to break that over in, like, two payments? You follow me? You are responsible for it, you know? If you did what this permit says and uh, something goes catawampus, well, uh, maybe you have a defense. You did what you're supposed to do. You drove where you're supposed to drive. You're on the route you're supposed to be on and then uh, let the company deal with it. Chances of that happen is pretty slim. Most of the time, stuff like this happens is because the driver did not read these permits properly. Permit loads are not difficult. Um, Following them is not difficult. Um, as long as you're disciplined enough to read them, they're going to give you the information that you're looking for. If the information that you are reading, um, you're confused about what you're reading, and and hey, don't be ashamed of that because a lot of this stuff is is uh, you know this stuff is not written by the common folk. It's you know lawyers and all this other kind of crap put that together. It does not read. Uh, it's not an easy read sometimes. Let me put it to you that way. But if you do not understand, uh, you're not you're not here to to, to to row that boat by yourself. You, all you just pick up a phone call, you know, say, hey, uh, safety, look, what's up? And see if you can't get that answer, okay? Um, if you're fresh and you just got off of a trainer's or mentor's truck, protocol says you call the, the trainer a mentor first and then uh, if you can't reach them then you would call um, safety I'm gonna tell you this I'm calling safety first because uh, that situation man is um, you need the right information right then you don't need you know a guesswork somebody's trying to uh make themselves appear to know what they're talking about. You you need the real deal. Because you can take a, a, a permanent load down the wrong highway and it can just be catastrophic on a lot of levels. And uh, you just want to make sure you get the right information. So my advice to you guys, um, I don't care what company you work for, but if specifically if you're working for Melton, 
you got an oversized load and you have a question, you need to contact safety. I mean, think about it this way. Would you rather contact them saying, hey, uh, before I take off, I need some clarification here? Or call them and say, hey, I thought I was supposed to do this, but I really supposed to do that. Now I got a bunch of lights behind me and they, wanna, they won't let me go any further. I'm in trouble. Which phone call do you want to make? You know, I I think that's simple. Okay, I'm gonna uh, try to try to give you guys a little bit more information on oversized loads. I'm also gonna do some stuff with uh, uh, with uh, the truck and how the signages go and stuff like that. Kind of help you out with that as well. I hope I'm giving you guys some useful information. If I did, please thumbs up this video. Really, really, really helps out. Subscribe. That really, really helps out. And my promise to you is, I'm not gonna send you information that's going to waste your time and you're going to wish that you didn't sign up for this i'm not I'm, you will never get false information from me and uh and i'm gonna try to never waste your time okay so it's going to be worth the thumbs up and it's going to be worth the sub i really appreciate it till i see you again deliver undistracted and here's your boop, Ear, boop.